morning everybody it's mark here uh, another installment of uh, mark's garage today today we're going to look at uh, a build showcase kind of an overview of my 2003 honda rc51 so great bike here really low miles 7,000 original miles i got this bike in a trade if you'll believe it or not I got this bike is in a trade for a supermoto, a Husqvarna supermoto that I'd had, <laughs> and then a, a 10 hour uh, 2001 Honda CR250R that I'd picked up in California, both of them in California. And I, I moved back to Louisiana and uh, just decided to I'd rather get rid of the dirt stuff for a while. So there's not really any places to ride here like California where you had, had a, a good trail system. So always wanted an RC51 so this was my first RC51 that I that I had acquired I got this from a dealer in Longview Texas it had when I got it it was in, in pretty rough shape pretty clean over the all though it had had some neon light kit that some guy had butchered all over it and it had uh, some two brothers slips on slip-ons which those were pretty much junk so I had to jettison them as well and then uh, just clean up a lot of the the crap that was on it I stripped it down to every to the chassis uh, and obviously just went through it put quite a few mods on it since then if i had to guess they're really never fully complete but if i had to guess i'd say i'm around 75 percent complete on on what the plans are i have for this bike and i'll go over a little bit of the things that i still have have pending on what i want to do some of the stuff for these old bikes these older bikes is just not available anymore so if you want to do the trick, Owens Road and Track front forks or some other brand of front forks, you're pretty much out of luck unless you find them on the secondhand market uh, these days. But I do got some plans for, for what I want to do, some more brake upgrades as, as well on the way. So let me just start uh, with a quick overview of some of the mods you see on this bike. Just, uh, you know, at first appearance, obviously the exhaust stands out, but everything else, if you didn't really know it, if you weren't a connoisseur of the bike, you might think it's, it's it's pretty stock. But when we get into some of the details, I think you're really going to appreciate what this bike has going on for it. So the exhaust, as you can see, obviously, like I said on all the rest of my bikes as well, the exhaust stands out. And, and that's by design. I, I really think if you're going to spend some money and if you're going to go exuberant on one portion of the bike that you want to catch the eye, the exhaust is the place to start. So I'm running actually a slip-on system with this bike. So uh, when you, there's very few full systems that were available for this bike. I believe Acra had one. Uh, Ladybird is making a full system that looks kind of like the HRC system. RP Tuning, a place uh, out of Europe, is making one that's similar to the to the HRC system as well. But I just wanted these traditional mount style cans. I didn't want the high mount. I didn't want the up and under like the race uh, system. So I wanted these traditional mount cans. So I went with Ladybird, a, a guy out of uh, out of uh, Japan, uh, Simon. He uh, he acquires this stuff and ships it back to the United States. He does quite quite well for himself, I'm sure. And I've purchased several things over the years from Simon. He's a great guy to deal with. If you need something from Japan direct market, he can probably get it to you. Uh, so the exhaust is Ladybird. It's Ladybird full titanium slip-ons and obviously in the rainbow tie these are a 60 millimeter inlet and a 60 millimeter outlet so they offer a 45 to their 45 or a 54 version as well that sounds not quite as deep and rumbly but actually uh if you ask around that's the one to get if you want to want the performance it runs a little bit better these big giant open canisters they sound great but they're kind of a bitch to tune and 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 they don't really run as well as the smaller smaller diameter canister but they do sound well so i went with sound over over maybe one or two horsepower and performance drop great system it's got the ladybird hangers as well those are hand bent tig welded aluminum polished a great great look i love the sweat back uh, nature of them to me they're better than the sato which are which are out there all those sato or titanium uh, i really love the ladybird they go great with the exhaust as well too next thing you'll come to probably that you notice is the wheels so these wheels again these are a, a japanese wheel from gale speed and i had them ordered in custom metallic bronze 
the Type R, something you don't see very often. I don't think I've ever seen another pair in the bronze. And you won't see them on very many RC51s, but they go great with the theme of the bike. This wheel right here, if, if you had it off the bike and in your hand, and uh, looking at it, just the bare forgings of it and the machining of it, and the finish is just beautiful. Uh, I have other wheels on my bike. I have uh, PVMs, I have PSTs, I have Marchesinis. These are just as nice for, for less money. They are really just as nice. Uh, braking wise, okay, right now we're about 80% complete with the braking system on this bike. I'll get to why, to why we're not fully complete here in a minute. So we're running Brake Tech cast iron rotors, awesome rotors. Brembo HP billet aluminum calipers, Galfer super bike lines, ride a GP style around the fork. Had to order that custom just a little bit from Galfer to give me a little bit of extra length so I could route them that way. In the back, another billet HP underslung caliper with a Galfer line as well. We've got a lightened rear rotor pretty much just hollowed out a lot of bikes will run these i'm not sure i remember what the brand was but uh, pretty easy to find uh, great great addition uh, opens up the space gives you the visual the wheel you want tie hardware all around on this bike i didn't forgot to mention that so i've if it was if it was available to replace i've replaced it with tie hardware so all your fork hardware all the brake hardware all the rotor hardware the bolt for the axles the hardware for the brake caliper on the rear, the brake rotor on the rear, all the case covers on this bike, on the engine case cover, I've sourced high hardware. And what I did was I went individually through the parts breakdown diagram and ordered individual bolts in the sizes I need. It took quite a while, but, and I've compiled a list if anybody needs that list that has an RC51 and wants to do it, I can tell you exactly what size bolts you need. Did the same thing on the triple clamps and the clip-ons. Even went as far as to source throttle housing bolts in tie. Tie hardware on the Scott steering damper, which is a great addition to any bike. Long since not available, but you can still find them on the, the secondary market, I believe. You might even be able to find them new, but I think they're I think they're all gobbled up. So you'll see the switch gear on this bike, it's special. We've got the MM switches going on. Uh, a guy in Canada, uh, Will G, you might be familiar with him if you know the RC51 world. He has the, probably the most incredible RC51 in the Northern Hemisphere. He actually made those custom. He had them, he had them machined. He wired them all up so they're plug and play. I can't believe he didn't sell more of them. He sold a few of them on, on the private market, but great, great, great pieces. We've got Light Tech carbon fiber mirrors. These go nice with the look of the bike. I've always liked the shape of these and the way that they fit with the front fairing quite a bit more than I like uh, like the uh, Magical Racing, which a lot of guys run as well, too. we got a Taiga carbon front fender. We've got a Taiga carbon rear hugger. We've got Taiga rear sets with carbon heel guards. We've got a Taiga uh, quick-release gas cap. We've got Taiga preload adjusters. And last of all, but not least... We've got a Taiga carbon rear tail section with the OEM style decals over the top of it. So if you don't know what you're looking for and you just see it going by, this is gonna look like a stock tail section, but that's an all carbon one piece, well, two piece tail because it has the provisions for the, uh, the, the solo cowl cover, which is great because there's a ton of room inside the RC51s there for, for, for wallets and cell phones. Underneath, We've got a DHC carbon undertail with LED integrated tail lights and turn signals and a carbon license plate hanger. Matt does great work out of Canada. Sometimes it can be a little bit slow on the uptake of getting the stuff, but it's worth the wait. We've got an Olms rear shock with preload adjuster. This was the top of the line Olms shock for this bike. Uh, they're still around. Kyle Racing has some if you'd like them. We've also got a Kyle underneath. You may not may not be able to see it, but we've got a Kyle Link. This is one of the mandatory mods for this bike that lots of people do. We've got some adjustable linkages there as well, so we can do some modifications to the ride height if we like. Now we've got a lot of additions on this bike as well from from Dale, who uh, who runs a company out of the UK that does the chain adjusters. 
Uh, his company's name is Race Torques. I have a lot of his parts on both of my RC51s. So we've got the Race Torques chain adjusters and lifters. We've got a Race Torques carbon front axle bolt. We've got more Race Torques on the right side of the bike with the titanium rear axle nut. We've got Race Torques titanium front sprocket nut. We've got Race Torques. You can see it just in there. This is another good essential mod. It's slop, it uh, tightens up your sloppy shifter shaft. We've got a uh, shifter support for Race Torques in there with a little bit of anodized blue poking out. Uh, we've got uh, a Galfer clutch line as you'll see there on the clutch slave cylinder as well. We've got some billet aluminum uh, adjustable shorty levers there. Those are temporary for now. So one of the things that I really want to do on this bike, uh, but I haven't made up my mind just quite yet as far as what brand I want, but I want to go uh, replace both the clutch cylinder and the master cylinder for the brakes. Uh, right now I'm kind of leaning towards the Brembo RCS Corsa Cata, I believe is what it is. It's brand new and out. So I kind of want to do that. Although, you know, I've had my eyes on the billet, billet aluminum uh, versions of those master cylinders as well, but those are, are quite a bit pricier. And from what I heard, they just don't perform that much better than the RCS. For the money, the RCS is, is really the way to go. I've got an HT Moto custom seat cover here. They've done some great work for me. They built both my RC51 seat covers. They're a little bit cheaper than the Louis Moto uh, version that I showed you on my Kawasaki's, but they still do some custom options. You'll see this one has a synthetic suede for the most part, and then carbon fiber pattern vinyl with some red stitching. Again, if you stand far away from it, it just kind of looks pretty stock until you get close up and really see the details. I've got some clip-ons here that I forgot to mention. These clip-ons are replicas of the HRC clip-ons. Uh, Simon in Japan also sourced them for me as well. And just look at the beautiful machining on, the, on those clip-ons. Uh, and these things are ultra adjustable. You can get these just where you want them, whether you want to cant them in more towards the gas tank or out more towards the, uh, towards the fairing. Uh, there's lots of room for adjustment on this bike on the front end. Uh, the only real issue you run into is with the uh, stock reservoirs with clearance on the fairing stay. Uh, Will, he made an awesome uh, hidden fairing stay for his bike that someday maybe I can talk him into to sharing the plans for that as well, but I'd love to do that and get rid of that old school fairing stay that uh, was prevalent on these bikes all the way into the, you know 2006 when they ended their, their model year run. Uh, you'll see these driven axle cups. These are just for looks. So they're, they're made to mimic the uh, quick release, uh, quick pull endurance style cups that you see on some of the endurance racing bikes, but they are just for looks. They really don't serve a purpose on a street bike or with the street axle set up, but they do look pretty trick. They do look pretty trick. And I put this on both of my RC 51s. Uh, that I think about covers the majority of this build. So this has been one of my favorite projects. This bike sounds incredible, y'all. I'm gonna crank it up for you here. I had it out this morning, uh, riding it around a little bit. I'm gonna crank it up here. And I know the, the camera is not gonna do justice for what this bike really sounds like, but this really is the th sound of thunder. Oh, also, for performance mods, I didn't mention this about my other bikes, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same on all my bikes. On this bike, I'm running a PC5 Power Commander with a custom map. Uh, I've got an HRC uh, clutch cage cover. It was made uh, by a private uh, individual uh, off of the HRC forums. I can't remember his name. It was Craig something or other. These are kind of hard to find, but Dale uh, with Race Torx makes an awesome version too. Uh, seeing if I missed anything else. I don't think I missed anything else. Uh, the windscreen is, is just a cheapo uh, right now. Uh, I liked it. It was dark smoke. It looked good with the, the graphics on it. That was one of the only things that's left on this bike that I got when I got it. So I've got uh, the Renthal grips that I like to run all, the, all my bikes, except for my Ducati now. I've switched the Domino on it, and I'll show you that later. I'm running those uh, those uh, Renthal grips. They're, they're great grips. Okay, without further ado, I'm gonna crank this beast up. Let you hear what it sounds like. Rev it up a little bit. I don't think it's gonna do justice, but this thing sounds amazing.
You'll love the gear drive cams if you've never heard an RC51. You can really hear them. They're very prevalent. A little battery issue there. Got a, uh, a WPS lithium ion battery. And over the winter time, I have had a little bit of problems with this battery. It's about two years old now. Uh, has the same battery in my other RC51, no issues, but it's been kind of slow to start, so I might have have one of the cells kind of dead in there. Let's just let you listen. There you have it i said this is an amazing bike i may have some onboard footage on my youtube channel already i may have some that i need to upload i've got a bit of gopro footage of this bike driving uh, riding it around uh, it sounds amazing under full throttle on the road uh, rc51 is truly a legendary bike they're not going anywhere but up in value no plans anytime soon to get rid of my RC51s or my Kawasaki's or the new Ducati that I just purchased. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to uh, give an overview of my 2004 Nikki Hayden RC51 next. Uh, I decided to do that one a little bit different with a budget build, but it still has some pretty trick parts on it as well. It's a high mileage bike, but it's in very good condition. I've completely stripped it down and redid it as well too. So if you like my videos, Click like, subscribe, and if you want some notifications your way, go ahead and get some notifications every way. My goal is to try and put up one video every week. I'm just starting my Ducati build, so I've got some parts uh, either already on the bike waiting to be overviewed or inbound. I'm starting very small, just stuff like a fender limiter and some grips and stuff like that. But uh, we'll see more on my channel, so thanks for watching today.